Claire, are you surprised that more other female playwrights aren't sort of doing... Like, where, where do you see yourself as, as fitting within within the, the theater scene in terms of what other types of things other, other women playwrights are presenting? Um, well, it's, it's funny. I can't say I see my work in relation to um, certain other female playwrights in Toronto, but I, I take a lot of inspiration from other places, like someone like Spalding Gray, if you know his work, um, Swimming to Cambodia, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's a master solo storyteller. He's, he's one of the most fabulous um, storytellers I've ever seen. My, I also see what I do in relation to Frida Kahlo, that she did a series of self-portraits that were literal and non-literal, um, that she was exploring um, key concepts of what it means to be a woman. And I, th- I think I'm doing that too. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Nina Arsenault. She is uh, the author and performer of The Silicone Diaries. Just to get back to something you said a minute ago, mm-hmm. um, you know, so many people talk about that struggle for external beauty and, and for beauty as the way that the rest of the world sees you. Yeah. The best, uh, most balanced of people, I guess, are so the ones who understand what inner beauty means and that regardless of what the external if that isn't in place, if you don't love yourself and who you are, um, it's a bit of a moot, a bit of a moot point because you'll constantly strive for somebody else's idea of what beauty is. Have you? How have you managed to find that inner beauty, that inner peace, or have you? Um, well, inner peace is something I'm looking for more and more all the time. Um, I don't think it's something you get to and then you're just there. I think it's something you have to maintain. Um, so I try to get there with meditation and working out is very important to me and just my psychological health every day. And, uh, also just one thing that has brought me a lot of peace is just to know that my life has always been, um, since my childhood, my life has always been entangled with concepts of beauty. It's, it's been an obsession my entire life. So something that brings me peace is to accept that. And I think it's always going to be like that. I think in this lifetime, um, I have a lot to learn about beauty. Well, when, one thing that, Dave, when you're saying, you know, people saying that maybe you took it to the extreme or, you know, what what the look that you decided to go for as a woman, you know, is maybe goes against the, tr- you know, one version of feminism or, or some people's ideals. I mean, my reaction is almost that maybe if you... Like for me, you know, for me to decide to to increase my bust or or to to sort of something like that would be different from someone who, if I had no breasts, all of a sudden getting that that free reign, like you're almost you're starting from scratch. And then what would you do? Like that's almost a different choice. And I would I would almost pose that question to those people that are like, well, it's not about that. But if you could, you know, if you had a, a bit of, you know. If yeah. you were a god and had Plato, what would you form, right? Well, like, I, I, you know what? Thanks for saying that, actually, because sometimes I forget um, in, in when I'm describing my story, I forget to mention that um, some of the surgeries I had were um, transsexual surgeries that were really about bringing my body, my outer body, in an alignment with an inner person. I think those are medically necessary for people to be happy. But then... I did a lot of other stuff that really was just for beauty. And I think it is really important to make that distinction. You, um, you've you been uh, on this quest for a long time now. And, we're, you know, you're often hearing of people who have had uh, really unfortunate results with plastic surgeons that have gone to less than reputable plastic surgeons or people who had, you know, pushed it too far or just botched the surgery. Yeah. Um, has that been a concern of yours? And... and uh, have you had any uh, close calls? Uh, yeah, I would say I did, yeah. Yeah, I had some close calls. anything you can share with us? Or about <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I can't really share it. But, uh, yeah, sometimes things go wrong, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, to fix that, it's not like fixing a car. It's because you're fixing a body. So when things go wrong, it's... Uh, it's intense. This is a complicated story. It's a complicated. Try to get uh, an, an understanding of 
of where you've come from to where you are and where you what what the, the Silicon Diaries is about. I mean, I think it it, it is a little complicated in in some ways too because it, there are a number of paradoxes here. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, some of the things that you've talked about run sort of counterintuitive to what m- most people's perception might be. Well, I think that we live in this kind of post-therapeutic culture where beauty is supposed to be either empowering or disempowering, Mm. liberating or oppressive, good for you or bad for you. And my experience with beauty has been that it's never that simple. It's never one or another. Empowerment is intertwined with disempowerment. Oppression is entwined with liberation. Beauty is such a primal thing. We all respond to it. Everyone does. And yet, um, you know, I think our culture teaches us that we're supposed to be like, okay, you're beautiful and you were born that way and good for you. Try not to think about it too much, but it's always the effect of it will always be there. And so I think our culture has really schizophrenic responses to beauty. And uh, certainly anyone who consciously goes out to achieve beauty, um, even though in many ways it's still the number one thing that can bring women privilege, pleasure, social standing, and yet any woman who goes out to uh, enhance her beauty can automatically be um, dismissed as superficial. Yeah, we're supposed to do it secretly or something. Absolutely. That's the myth of natural beauty. Number one, natural beauty, well, that's great if you're born natural, but what if, what if you aren't? And uh, you have to deal with not living with that privilege. And as soon as you enhance it, then you're put down for that. And so there's a lot of misogynistic ideas, I think, interwoven to specifically about how we feel about women's beauty. But I think if you looked at the earliest, earliest mythologies, I think back to Helen of Troy or, you know, archaic historic legends, beauty is often a primal uh, motivating response mm-hmm. for those stories. It's still with us. Mm-hmm. Well, you, uh, your play goes a long way, I guess, to, to taking on some of those issues. I, I, when you mentioned Spalding Gray, I, I mean, I think if you're going to... I can't think of a tougher thing to do than to stand out there. I, you know, we do the show every day, yeah. and um, you do a lot of talking. But to 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 be that intimate, telling this very intimate story, um, in a way that is entertaining, factual, and good on you. And, and <laughs> you talk about biting off a, a big bite <laughs> right off the bat. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. I wish you all the best with this. I Thank I, I, I want to come see it, and I think it's a I think it's a great story. I hope people. Uh, We'll uh, check it out. It, uh, pre- it previews uh, Friday and Saturday? Uh, yeah, that's right. Pro- and then no, op- uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then opens uh, officially on the 17th. Yes, that's right. Buddies in Bad Times Theater. For more information on Nina Arsenault, uh, we've linked her website to our website. We've linked the Silicon Diaries website to ours, as well as the Buddies in Bad Time Theater website. Thank you so much. Thank you.